Hey friends, welcome to Generation Tech. Now I know we normally talk about Star Wars, but you know, Star Trek are really good at making their fake science sound convincing. Adjust pitch angle. You've been experiencing a harmonic amplification effect. Have engineering a touch of cargo pod with 200 kilograms of trilithium to each torpedo. The ribbon is a conflux of temporal energy which travels through this galaxy every 39.1 years. It will pass through this sector in approximately 42 hours. They really sound like they know what they're talking about, don't they? They've even written entire technical manuals for some of the ships. The Enterprise D's manual was my favorite in elementary school. The other kids kind of bullied me for it. But anyway, this attention to detail means that the size of the ships and the statistics about them are far more accurate than those in Star Wars. This is the real size of Star Trek ships. First up, we have the runabout. Although similar in size to a shuttlecraft, the Danube-class runabout is often described as a small starship. The warp-capable vessel could take crews on extended interstellar missions. You could say it was the Winnebago of Star Trek shuttlecraft. Look at this floor plan. It comes complete with beds, this dinner table that offers a great view of the stars, or the countryside when you land it in a campsite. I hear the camping on Bajor is great now the Cardassian occupation is over. Only one toilet though. At 23 meters long, it's almost twice the length of the Winnebago Grand Tour. The runabout had a cruising speed of warp 4 and with modifications, a maximum speed of warp 8.3. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. Um, wrong franchise. We're a Star Wars channel. We're still getting used to this. Next up, the Defiant. This was the only warship built by the Federation in the regular timeline. In fact, it was even classed as an escort vessel because the Federation doesn't build battleships. They run ships with family values where you can even bring your kids along and all that entails. Captain Picard Day is one of the children's favorite school activities. They look forward to it all year. Bunch of pussies. But if you think about it, it's actually kind of messed up. While this was going on, there were literally preschoolers on board clutching their teddy bears for dear life. Starship separation in four minutes. Anyway, back to the Defiant, which thankfully didn't have a kindergarten on board. The ship was 170 meters long, which is twice the length of the UK's astute class nuclear powered submarines. Or to put it in simpler terms, it was about the size of a small sports stadium. The ship's 30 meter height gave it just four decks. It was originally designed to counter the Borg and was overpowered for its size. It almost ripped itself apart during testing. Because of this design flaw and the diminishing Borg threat, the Defiant program was put on hold by Starfleet. The ship you see in Deep Space Nine was the prototype, but the ship proved itself against the Dominion. Next we have Voyager. This, like the Defiant, was also a small ship. At 343 meters long, it was only slightly longer than a US Nimitz class aircraft carrier, but it had 15 decks. This Intrepid class starship had a maximum speed of warp 9.975. I swear it was a mistake to make warp 10 the theoretical maximum. They have to keep adding extra decimals. Didn't they learn anything from Spinal Tap? If you can see, yeah. the numbers all go to 11. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder. These go to 11. Voyager has the ability to land on the surface of a planet, which sets it apart from other Federation ships. Ships like the Enterprise or various Enterprises. Obviously the most classic line of ships in the Star Trek universe. The original Enterprise was 298 meters long. That's the length of six NASA space shuttles and still a little bit shorter than Voyager but it was taller with 22 decks, which in my opinion, made it kind of goofy looking. It was dwarfed by later enterprises such as the Enterprise D of the next generation, the one that had a lot of kids on it. The Enterprise D was 642 meters long and had 42 decks. That's over six times the length of the International Space Station. The Enterprise E was even longer at 685 meters. That's twice as long as Harmony of the Seas, the largest cruise liner in operation. Next, the USS Vengeance. This is the only alternate reality starship we're covering in this video. The J.J. Abrams movies don't go into as much detail as the regular Star Trek reality, so it's a little vague. 
But the alternate reality Enterprise is supposedly 760 meters long and the USS Vengeance is supposedly double the size of the Enterprise, which would make it 1,500 meters in length. You know what else is approximately that size. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe one day the two universes can meet after all. The USS Vengeance was developed at a secret facility orbiting Jupiter and was under the command of Admiral Alexander Marcus, father of Carol Marcus, the one who mysteriously comes aboard the Enterprise seemingly for the sole purpose of providing this eye-catching shot for the trailer of the movie. Turn around. The USS Vengeance had a massive armament of phasers and photon torpedoes. Oh, and its warp drive really did go up to 11. In the movie, Khan says that it's twice the size of the Enterprise and three times as fast. The Enterprise's top speed was warp 8 in the old scale before they made 10 the absolute maximum. And it was a logarithmic scale, so it increased in an exponential curve. Thus, three times warp 8 was warp 11.538. I got that from some guy on the internet. Anyway, that's our rundown of some of my favorite Federation vessels. Obviously, we're not going to cover the really dumb looking ones like the Olympic class hospital ship. But if we missed any other awesome ships, please leave them in the comments below. If the response to this video is good, we may do a part two of non-Federation vessels. So tell us what you think. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe to our channel. And if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.